Hello and welcome to the south coast of England. I'm at a place called Jury's Gap on the Dungeness Peninsula, a massive shingle promontory that juts into the English Channel. This beach behind me runs nine kilometres from here to the nuclear power station on the tip of the peninsula. Running along the top of the beach is a shingle ridge which acts as a barrier to the sea. Also holding back the water is this embankment wall, known as the Green Wall. The south side of the wall faces the beach and the sea, and the north of the wall, Romney Marsh, a large area of reclaimed land which is home to hundreds of businesses, thousands of homes and tens of thousands of acres of prime agricultural farmland. A lot of that land is lower than the current average high tide level and climate change means sea levels are rising even higher, increasing the flood risk into the future. Big storm events can easily reshape the ridge and ultimately break through letting the sea inland. Modelling shows how quickly high tide waters could inundate vast areas, devastating houses, destroying businesses and ruining farmland. From Folkestone to Cliff End at Hastings, there is a continuous line of coastal defence which protects the land from catastrophic flooding. This stretch is known as Lid Ranges because the land immediately behind here is owned by the Ministry of Defence and is a series of live firing ranges. The MOD has been training our armed forces and specialist police units here for over 150 years. It's important that they continue and help to maintain national security. Over the next three summers, the Environment Agency partnered with the MOD and contractors Van Oud will be carrying out vital works as part of a £25 million scheme. Britain's coastal defences face many threats. There's the rising sea levels caused both by climate change melting the polar ice caps and this other thing called isostatic rebound. I know, right? <laughs> Blame the ice age compression. But anyway, it's very slowly making Britain tilt. On top of that, we're getting more extreme weather events, which together with the rising sea levels means bigger waves hitting the coast even harder. Plus, natural coastal evolution shifts the shoreline anyway. Together with the rising sea levels, and the more extreme weather events, this can sometimes happen more suddenly. Along this stretch of coastline, prevailing winds, waves and currents gradually drift the protective shingle eastwards. This can leave the green wall exposed to high tides and powerful waves, risking a breach in the seawall and flooding. Especially in the winter when there are more storms. Storm Chiara battered the coast here in early 2020, severely damaging sections of the Green Wall and flooding and shutting down parts of the MOD's firing ranges. Emergency teams carried out immediate repairs and the project team was rapidly assembled. Their job? To strengthen the seawall before the next winter. They built this new rock revetment to protect the green wall embankment behind and this year they will extend this revetment by a further 380 metres. New shingle was pumped to shore by Van Oud's specialist dredger Vox Amalia to restore the protection provided by the beach. And two new timber groins were built, wooden walls that extend down the beach and hold the shingle protection in place. This year they will build another 32 groins using carefully sourced imported tropical hardwood extending the groin field for 1.8 kilometres. More shingle will be brought to the beach to protect against storms this coming winter. The shingle is delivered at high tide on a flat bottom barge. Diggers and dumpers then come in at low tide, grab the shingle and push it into place and then the empty barge floats away to collect the next load on the next high tide. Barge delivery minimises disruption and helps to reduce carbon emissions from many hundreds of lorry movements if the shingle were to be brought in by road. One barge delivery equals about 590 lorry loads. The Environment Agency is always looking for ways to reduce its carbon footprint and has committed to a challenging net zero carbon target by 2030. So, check out the environmentally friendly solar panels powering the toilets. Less carbon emissions, tick. 
LED lighting, less power consumed, tick. Hydro treated vegetable oils to power all plants on site, less diesel fuel used, tick. Another focus for the Environment Agency is the environment. Fauna, flora, plants, animals. Dungeness Peninsula is a unique area for nature and wildlife. The land and intertidal areas are internationally recognised as a special protection area, a special area of conservation and a site of special scientific interest. All construction work is carefully planned and monitored to balance the engineering requirements against the environmental sensitivity of this important bit of coast. And the presence of the MOD firing ranges has created many pockets of completely undisturbed beach, shingle and inland lagoons. The much admired Avocet, emblem of the RSPB can be seen here and its Schedule 1 protection status under the BIRDS Directive means that its nesting habits take priority over construction. Works are scheduled carefully to avoid disturbing any breeding pairs. Vegetated shingle habitat like this is rare and in decline globally. It's home to uncommon species of plants, invertebrates and insects. And these fragile ecosystems have evolved over thousands of years, but can be destroyed all too quickly. Next year, work will continue on the South Brooks frontage, where the green wall will be repaired and raised in some of the lower sections. And Van Oort's Voxamalia will once again be pumping specially sieved shingle to shore, matching the beach's existing shingle. The works will also include the landwards relocation of the Denge Marsh outfall pipe and associated control structure. This work is needed in response to the natural shoreline evolution at this location. All these vital works will provide better protection for Romney Marsh against coastal flooding, but we are already considering further into the future. That's why the Ministry of Defence Natural England and the Environment Agency have formed a working group to address the long-term future of this very special shoreline. The project is scheduled to be complete by the summer of 2023. But check in at the end of this year when we will update you on the progress of this work that will provide protection for years to come for the whole of Romney Marsh. Mm -hmm.